at number 109, that's page 239 in your missalette, at number 109. And while you're looking for that in your missalette, uh, let me just tell you that the uh, our local council of the Knights of Columbus <coughs> joined the Shriners for their 56th annual fundraising event last evening. And uh, I think I distributed about two dozen raffle tickets here, so you'll be interested in knowing that they uh, raffled a freezer full of beef at uh, about four o'clock yesterday afternoon. And uh, it was won by a person from Campbellsville, Sarah Shively. Sarah Shively. <coughs> and we think it was one of the tickets sold by one of the Shriners. So anyway, I always like to try to report to you on how those things go. Uh, <clears throat> they went on with the auction, and that was uh, virtual. Uh, we, they had to go online to do the auction, which is always... Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. 
But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obey my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed when even when I said I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O God, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will I walk, walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? <clears throat> who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Jesus Christ, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Everybody. Praise, praise, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Praise, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I'm going to exercise the option and read the story of the Transfiguration from St. Matthew. I have a special affection for that account. It's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But we have the option to go to readings for year A. Uh, so here we go. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We can go the gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to Lord. Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and James' brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, his clothes became white as light. Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. I, if you wish, I will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Wives, do not be afraid. When the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus 
charge them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm always a bit careful in articulating uh, the last line of Matthew's account of the Transfiguration. You know, we, we hear it every year on uh, the second Sunday of Lent, but we also hear it on the 6th of August, which is the Feast of the Transfiguration. And uh, as I mentioned in the bulletin, it's become ever more prominent because uh, after going for many centuries with uh, three collections of mysteries of the rosary, joyful, sorrowful, and glorious, <clears throat> Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul II, about 20 years ago, established another set of luminous mysteries, and Transfiguration is one of them. But anyway, I'm always careful with that last line. <clears throat> Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Because back in the seminary, in our high school preparatory seminary, we had pretty strict rules for Lent. Uh, they limited the amount of time we could watch television anyway. But in Lent, it was even more limited. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> after this gospel was read one year, I remember <clears throat> a guy saying, boy, they really are getting strict this year, aren't they? Television to no one. <laughs> but you know, actually, we've seen a good bit of this in the last uh, several weeks of Jesus's what the scholars call messianic secret. This tells us that the transfiguration happened pretty early in his career because a lot of the remarkable things he's doing, he doesn't want broadcasts just yet. And again, there are a lot of debates as to why that would be. But we've seen several examples of that. Remember the curing of the leper? And he told them, uh, don't go tell anybody about it. You know, well, he's saying the same thing to the apostles. Uh, and again, I, I, uh, if I were James and John, Peter, uh, I would be pretty excited about it. Uh, and they were. This business about uh, Peter saying, uh, should we build three tents? He's not talking about little pup tents that you sleep in overnight. He's talking about a sanctuary, really, a holy place, which is what they would have done as nomadic peoples. They would, you know, uh, really appreciate their shade in the desert and tents, you know, uh, particular types of tents, uh, canopies, would be, uh, you know, uh, considered a marking off a sacred space, almost a ritual. Uh, you, you can remember probably <clears throat> when we have a procession with the Blessed Sacrament, the Corpus Christi processions, there would be often a canopy carried with four posts uh, over the Blessed Sacrament. Same idea as this. So it's not about the story of the Transfiguration that is pleasant. And quite in contrast, uh, bless her heart, to the reading that uh, Virginia gave us from Genesis. I, that, that's, that's a uh, it's almost a reading that I want to caution people to cover the ears of small children because it's, uh, it, 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 it's, there's a terroristic element to it with, <clears throat> and, and, and first of all, the, the, the strange uh, request or demand that Yahweh is giving to Abraham to sacrifice his son. Now, of course, we see it as the... Uh, Prediction, the preview, the pro prophecy of the Son of God on the cross. But it is a scary moment there for a while. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, it just uh, you know, makes you uneasy when you're, you're not familiar with, with how the story comes out. But uh, there, there's another element of it that I like to focus on, too. Uh, Abraham, of course, gets this reprieve from Yahweh. No, 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 Abraham, don't, no, 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 don't, 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 don't do what, don't do what I had advised you to do. I, I was just 
giving you a test. <clears throat> and of course, you know, Abraham's pretty thrilled, you know, that Isaac is going to survive. And uh, in fact, you know, as he will learn later, you know, propagate his, his, uh, grow his progeny, his, his clan. But he wants to ritualize his joy. Now, because of events of the 20th century, the word Holocaust has a lot of different, you know, has a much different nuance for us than they would have had in the Old Testament. But a Holocaust was a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And they showed thanksgiving to God by taking not usually a runt from their flock, but the best that they had to offer. You know, now, um, Abraham went up on the mountain. He didn't take any special sheep with him, and he happened to see one there in the bushes. And so he said, oh, good, oh, good, oh, good. I can give my gratitude to Yahweh in this ritualized way. And so he takes the ram and does a sacrifice of the lamb as an expression of his gratitude. Well, I love the fact that we, you know, read the Transfiguration during Lent. Um, as I said, I enjoy it in August as well. But I think it fits particularly well into what I think is um, not exactly unique, but certainly one of the identifiable characteristics of Roman Catholicism. One of the best things that we have going for us, and you hear me say it all the time, is our sacramental system. <clears throat> and it's something that I have kind of watched my own um, experience of my own, my own experience of faith, my own experience of affection for the sacraments grow and develop really all my life. Uh, I, I can remember as, as, you know, as a small child, I really enjoyed going to the uh, to, to, to Mass and to the sacramental moments, to things like <clears throat> benediction, 40 hour devotion, and so on like that. And even <clears throat> since this is before 1965, even though it was uh, in a foreign language, it was in Latin, you know, I, I liked those rituals pretty well. Uh, we didn't have as open an understanding of the sacraments uh, then as we do now. We, we weren't sort of engaged with our sacraments in the way we are now, and the, the language is, is part of it. But I, I can still remember <clears throat> asking a priest, um, about Billy Graham. Billy Graham had uh, come and done one of his myriad of uh, crusades uh, in Louisville. And so we, you know, had Billy Graham very much in the news. And of course, he was always really in the news doing these massive crusades all around the world, really. You know, and so I, I asked this priest, I said, uh, you know, yeah, it's really popular, you know. What, what's he, what is it that uh, he's got going for him? And the, and the priest said, well, you know, he just really knows the Bible awfully well, and he preaches it very effectively, you know, and his own personal conviction, that, that's pretty strong. And then he went on to say, uh, but in his experience, he maybe celebrates two sacraments, marriage and baptism. Now he said, this priest, in our tradition, we celebrate seven. And uh, so that was an early on, you know, uh, experience for me of embracing the, the sacramental system. You know, and then again, after the council, um, the, the, uh, the vernacular, meaning that we put our sacraments and our rituals, our prayers all in, in English, we began to develop a much better appreciation of them. Uh, and again, you know, because it was ecumenical and I began to interact with, with people of other denominations, I did a lot of curiosity, a lot, a lot of questions about them. I remember uh, having a, a, a dating friendship with a, a, a girl that went to a Baptist church, and uh, um, I tried to answer her questions about sacraments. She, for her part, 
you know, helped me to know what it meant to have a personal relationship with Jesus and to, you know, read the scriptures devotionally and so on. Um, there was a lot of, 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 of a sense of, um, yes, mystery, but almost a magical sense that a lot of folks had about the sacraments, that because we ritualized them, you know, we used incense and, and, and bells and, and foreign language and so on and so forth, um, used a lot of symbols, you know, water, flame, and all, <clears throat> that, that it was a magical sort of, of approach that we took, that, you know, if a, a priest did the gestures, held his hands a certain way and so on like that, then suddenly God would be present where God was not present before. Uh, <clears throat> and as I've grown, especially through now nearly 50 years in ordained ministry, you know, I, I've, I've gotten a, a, a richer sort of sense that the faith is not a belief that something magically happens, but <clears throat> that the change takes place from within us. And we are outwardly expressing our belief that God is present with us all the time. Next weekend, <clears throat> I'll get to celebrate a, 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 a christening, a baptism here. Uh, we've had several in recent weeks. Had two on Christmas Eve at St. Ignatius and another one on New Year's Day at St. Ignatius. And now this one's coming up next weekend. <clears throat> I don't make the baby something that the baby was not before. We believe that the baby is sacred from the moment of conception. And when I use the oil, the water, the candle, and the garment, and the prayers, and the gestures, and the rituals, I will outwardly be expressing that belief. That this belief, this baby is sacred because our God came into the world as a baby. So it's an outward expression of what we believe within. So <clears throat> that's not anything new for you. It's something that I have a tendency to, you know, reflect on um, several times a year, but particularly on this uh, weekend of, uh, of the second Sunday of, of Lent. Because as we get further and further into Holy Week, we'll do more and more rituals and ceremonies and sacraments. And uh, like for us to always be uh, not just refreshing our understanding of sacraments, but also further developing our devotion to the sacraments and our appreciation of them. <clears throat> because as I mentioned earlier, I think it's, it's you know, one of the things that, that uh, we really have going for us as Roman Catholics and uh, as people of faith. Well, I'm going to give you a few moments of silence now, and then we'll move <clears throat> right to the words of Jesus at the Last Supper that we express in this and every Mass that we ever celebrate. Veruka Adonai, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
The Ruka Adonai, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine with the puny hands that will become our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the offering which we present to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. To the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that suffering leads to the glory of the resurrection. And gives us in our sacramental life these wonderful moments in which we glimpse from our present human condition the joy of life with Christ. Now with the angels and saints of heaven, we proclaim before your majesty without end, holy, 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 holy Lord, God of our hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts. The gifts in our homes, the gifts in the Parloff, the gifts in the pews, the gifts in the sanctuary, the gifts on the altar. By sending down your Holy Spirit upon us like the dewfall, that we may become what we eat, the body and blood of our Lord living in our world today. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come again. Now, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister with you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring it to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis I, our Pope, Benedict XVI, our Pope Emeritus, Joseph Kurtz, our Archbishop, all the clergy, the religious, the entire people in the Son of being for you. Remember the deceased of the Thomas and Thompson family, in whose memory today's Mass is offered. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her husband, Joseph, the Apostles, St. Ambrose, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, with them may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. For it is through Jesus, with Jesus, and in Jesus, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Let's continue our prayer in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And this is not to the nations, but to the Lord of Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Son, our Lord. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with each of you today and always. And bring with your spirits. Let's greet each other in the peace of Christ. Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your loving death has brought life to the world by your holy body and blood. Free us from sin and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from it. Lamb of God, you take the of the world and mercy us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and grant us peace. Here now is the Lamb of God, Jesus, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who have called on the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my root. I only to say the word, my son shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe to eternal life. Amen.
Sharon has been playing as beautiful Savior, and I invite you to sit down and take the missalette. And it's easiest to go from inside the back cover because it's the only one turn of the page. It's number 132. Um, very familiar melody and a wonderful message. Christ in our midst. 
No, no. I, I, uh, I've really taken that to heart. A lot of times you'll hear me say, well, thanks for coming. I can do this by myself, but it's more fun when you're here. I took that really right out of Pope Benedict's teaching <clears throat> because our coming together and this past 51 weeks, this past uh, <clears throat> better than 11 months now, has really shown how much we want to come together. Because even when we have not had the obligation, you know, we still want to come. And we're taking our uh, precautions and so on. So anyway, it just uh, uh, strengthens uh, my faith that the Lord is present to us all the time. But we ritualize that, we outwardly express it. And that's exactly what Jesus was doing on Mount Tabor when he said to the apostles, this is what the glory looks like. But you've got to go through the difficulties and the challenges. And that's what we do in our sacraments. We look at ourselves and our human condition, and we get a glimpse of our Savior in and through those seven wonderful moments. Let's stand once more and pray. As we celebrate these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to have a glimpse of your presence in our midst and the joy of life to come in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God.